If you've been trying to create beautiful, aesthetic and responsive charts for your web application, but you were not quite satisfied, this is the ultimate tutorial. We're going to integrate Chart.js with Nuxt. And we're going to build a composable that you can reuse in any project. And it's going to automatically synchronize the style of uh, the charts with your Nuxt UI palette. And this will allow you to achieve responsive and super aesthetic charts. Let's go. We are going to start from uh, the template that I published on GitHub. Every tutorial, this template is going to be you know, integrated and I'm going to basically add uh, new stuff and new branches. I also added a few utilities functions here, color stuff and some data structure uh, that we can use to basically create the mock data from the, for the charts. So the first thing we want to do is just install the required dependencies, chart.js and uh, view chart.js view package that is used to integrate chart.js into Nuxt uh, very easily. Okay, our packages are installed, so we're ready to go. Chart.js requires, you can check the documentation for, for the details, but basically it requires two objects to be passed to charts. Uh, one is the options and one is the data. What we're going to do is just wrap the options into a composable uh, and then reuse this composable for basically all of our charts. In this way, the styles are going to be perfectly synchronized with Nuxt UI. And we're gonna create a composable inside this uh, folder called chart. So this composable will effectively act as a wrapper around our chart options. Um, so what we want to do first is just give this composable a type because again, we're not crazy, we use types. So I'm gonna just paste this um, type hint right here. We're gonna import both from chart.js. And what we are saying here is just simply that this composable is related to a certain chart type uh, because in chart.js you can have different types, for example, line, bar chart, bubble chart. So whenever we use this composable, we're going to give it a type. In this way, our options are going to be perfectly typed and much easier to work with. Then we're going to modify a little bit the signature of this composable because uh, we're going to have some default options inside here, but we will want uh, to have the possibility to change and edit these uh, options uh, whenever we want. So what we're going to do is, is using a decorator pattern kind of like this, that given the options is going to basically modify it uh, internally. We can define our options, which is going to be a computer property, and it's going to have the type uh, of our chart options of T. So basically we are going to return uh, the options as chart option of T. Perfect. The first thing we want to do is pull out the styles and the colors from Nuxt UI. So if you go to the Nuxt UI documentation, to the team sections, you have the CSS variables, and here you basically have all the CSS variables that are defining uh, the colors, extract uh, the three main colors and the font family. Uh, right now, I'm going to paste a huge, let's say, wall of text, which is going to be uh, the default options that we are going to return. It's, it's going to be much easier. The whole purpose of this thing is just to make uh, the charts look nice. Uh, as you see, I'm basically just uh, putting in the, the different variables and the different colors inside the charts. I already have like some setup uh, that I did with trial and error for, for my products. For example, the spacing, the border width, all this kind of stuff is just uh, making the charts look uh, very, very nice and very sleek. You can perfectly customize. You can just go to the chart.js documentation. And if you go to configuration here, you're going to basically have all the options that you can use. Once we created our options here, what we want to do is just pass this object through the decorator. In this way, if we want to customize the options for a certain uh, specific chart, we can do that. We have a decorator, we just pass the option to our decorator and then return the options. And in the end, from the composables, we can simply return the options hit save and now we have our composable perfectly ready let's go into the into our index it is stated in the documentation that to make them responsive you basically have to wrap the component into a relative uh, position at div in which you specify the the dimension in this case the height and the width is 100 percent and then you can put inside your chart uh, for the first example we're going to use a line chart so we can simply import the line chart line from viewchart.js perfect and then we're going to create this component of line our data which we need to define and then our options which we need to define too so for our options we're going to use our use chart and then we can pass an empty object because if we want inside here we could pass our decorator for the moment we just pass an empty object and then we can pass as the options 
the options. We can give this a type, as you see here, it's going to complain, but we can give this a type as line, and it's going to work perfectly. We forgot to put value in, and now we have to build our data. Uh, the structure of the data uh, differs for each different uh, chart type, and you can check the documentation for the different types. I'm just gonna pass some, uh, some code here that is just going to create some random data. So import this from chart.js and now we have our data and we can put this in. As you see here, I'm also specifying the colors directly in the data set. Uh, this is something that I decided to keep because uh, I, we could specify the colors directly inside the default options. But in this case, we would have like uh, a lot less control. Hit save and everything is sure uh, should be ready. Now we can run the server. Uh, Charge.js uh, needs to be registered, um, like every every component, everything you use uh, inside a certain, let's say, script or view component needs to be registered. Just create a plugin here into the plugins folder. And this plugin is going to initialize and register everything from Charge.js, chart, and it, we're going to make only client. And then we can just put the code here, take everything from Charge.js, you see all the registrables and just register everything. Now, this solution of the plugin, even if it's not the best in terms of performance, because in this way, we are basically registering everything and it's not really, uh, we are not really sure we are going to use everything, but like the quality of life is much better. And in my experience, the, like the performance loss is completely negligible. Like you cannot even see it. Be aware of the fact that usually registering everything in a plugin is not the best way to deal with stuff but in this case it's totally fine and now we can see we have our line uh line chart perfectly displaying we have everything and uh, we have the tooltip perfectly styled the border uh, the font the also the background and maybe we can shrink this a little bit and now we have our chart which is a little bit better we just use this composable which is wrapping everything for us and it's extremely extremely valuable uh, what we're going to do now is just uh, as an example create a, a new chart a new type of chart we import first the bubble chart we're going to duplicate this put it here and uh, give it a little bit more spacing and just this becomes a bubble we need to create a new one so it's going to be bubble chart and now we need some data for the bubble charts now we have this this mockup data two data sets here we're using the nuxt ui primary color while instead here we are using the some CSS variables directly from the Tailwind CSS colors. Replace this data with the bubble data. Now we can hit save, go back to reload. And now we have uh, our two charts perfectly displaying and everything is working correctly. You can see uh, we can also like disable the data sets and it's going to automatically adjust. There is one thing that I'm noticing. So if you see here uh, on the line chart, Whenever I'm moving the cursor, even if I'm not on the line, the tooltip is going to perfectly match the point basically that I'm highlighting. And it, this behavior here on the bubble chart is kind of messing everything. I'm not able to hover perfectly uh, on top of the bubble. And this is coming from our uh, defaults options here. If you go and see here, interaction, we have this interaction mode set to index. And this is basically doing just the index on the X axis. So in this case, since we bubble chart doesn't really have X index, it's just have, you know, X position and Y, it's going to uh, mess kind of everything. And the way we're going to fix this is using uh, the decorator. So if we go here on the index, we have our bubble chart. We can use our decorator. We can define our options. And now here we can modify our options. So take the interaction, the mode to nearest in this way we are basically changing the default behavior of the interaction uh, only for the bubble chart if we see now we can perfectly hover over our points and even on the charts we can keep uh, the functionality of having the index over like this we can see here in the logs that we have some errors and why is that basically if we go to the index uh, we are rendering these charts uh, also on the server. So whenever it calls uh, our co our composable, it's going to run this computer property here and it's going to run this window.getComputer style, which is not going to be present in our server. And the, the best way to fix this is just to put the uh, charts client side. In this way, you're not gonna have any problem. Everything is working. 
and we do not have the error anymore. This one is from before. One last thing that I want to show is actually uh, how to create plugins for uh, our charts. So if we go to our chart composable, inside here we can export plugins factory. And inside here, we are going to define all our custom plugins that we can then put inside our charts. What I want to do is just be able to uh, display a vertical line. It's going to highlight the corresponding point as the index, and it's going to be a type plugin. And then we have our function called before row. The code is it's kind of very simple. What, what I'm doing is just checking if there is an active tooltip being highlighted. And I'm, then I'm taking the positions and then uh, drawing a line. If you see here, I'm just stroking with two, uh, with a width of two, uh, from the top to the bottom. And and we're doing this before the draw, so the index. And now here we can add our plugins. We can do plugins factory dot vertical indicator, just like this. Hit save, go back here, and now we have our indicator. If you see here, uh, whenever I'm hovering over a certain index. Uh, I have a very, very nice indicator that is animating perfectly, extremely smooth. Like it's so, it's so smooth, very, very cool. To include uh, a plugin that you want to develop on your own, you can just go here, uh, just define a new static variable, uh, write the code, and then you can use it wherever you want inside your charts. Final thing is that uh, aside from custom plugins, you can also use plugins directly from Chart.js. So if you go here to the documentation and getting started, you have uh, this link right here that is going to bring you to a list of all the available plugins that you can use inside Chart.js. Chart.js is a huge environment, so like I suggest you to just dive in and explore it a little bit if you need charts. And uh, also this annotation one is very, very good. I've been using this also in my scuba divers product. So as an example, these are the charts uh, that I used inside my product for scuba divers. As you see here, uh, we have these all these annotations inside the chart. So we have this box, this line. Just remember that when you use uh, plugins from Chart.js, uh, a lot of them needs to be registered. So you will have just uh, to go inside here, our chart client plugin and just register here your plugin like on the side here, you can just register here and it's going to work right away. So just remember to do that and you and you're good to go. Here you go. Now you have uh, beautiful charts that you can use for your next uh, millionaire SaaS. As always, I'm going to push uh, this code into a dedicated branch on the repository and uh, I'm going to update the, the template uh, with like new features, new packages. And so you, you can use the template for whatever project you want to. So if you found this tutorial useful, just give, give me a like if, if you want. I'm going to post a lot of more tutorials. As I said, I'm also creating a playlist uh, for all the tutorials uh, on Next. So you're going to have all the tutorials for Next uh, in, in a single playlist. And yeah, so that's it for today's video and cheers.